Hello, my name is Caden Matthews, and today I will be talking to you about Frederick Nietzsche, his life, and his writing on the use and abuse of history for life. Frederick Nietzsche was born on October 15, 1844, in Röken, Prussia, which is part of present-day Germany today. He was a German philosopher who is known for being one of the most influential modern-day thinkers of the last few centuries. He is known for many of his ideas, some of which went against what most people thought and believed back in the day, such as religion and morality. Some of his famous works include Thus Spoke Zarathustra and Twilight of the Idols. Some of Nietzsche's family is listed here. His father, Karl Nietzsche, was a Lutheran pastor in the town of Rukin. He died when Nietzsche was just five years old. He also had a mother, Franziska, and sister, Elisabeth. Nietzsche attended a preparatory school in 1850, which then led into a Protestant boarding school. After these years of schooling, Nietzsche attended the University of Bonn, where he studied theology and classical philology. However, he only lasted two semesters due to issues with his professors. After this, he transferred to the University of Leipzig, where he studied under Albrecht Rischel. Years later, Rischel informed the University of Basel that Nietzsche was extremely bright and gifted, and so the university awarded him a position as a professor of classical philology. He taught there for 10 years. In the last 11 years of his life, Nietzsche's mental health declined. He slowly drifted into insanity, likely due to syphilis or an unknown brain disease. He died on August 25, 1900. Nietzsche advocated for things that the people of his time wouldn't dare to touch on, which made him extremely well known. He defied the ideals of his time. He is associated with the creation of the idea of nihilism, which is basically the rejection of all things religion and morality. He also had a huge influence on philosophers and psychologists today, such as Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Nietzsche wrote an extremely important piece that dictated his beliefs on history and why modern day man was going in the wrong direction in terms of advancement. There are 10 articles to this. Number one, Nietzsche's first point is about history. He believed that we shouldn't be living our lives based off of our past experiences, but rather the present time and anything in the moment. By living in the past, we struggle to, our, to live our lives in the present and actually have a true life. There are a few quotes that I'd like to touch on from his writing on the use and abuse of history for life. There are people who possess so little of this force that they bleed to death incurably from a single experience, a single pain, often even from a single tender injustice, as from a really small bloody scratch. On the other hand, there are people whom the wildest and most horrific accidents in life and even actions of their own wickedness injure so little that right in the middle of these experiences or shortly after, they bring the issue to a reasonable state of well-being with a sort of quiet conscience. This refers to those who are so lost in the experiences of their past that they can't seem to dig themselves out of the awful reality that they live in. Those who don't take into consideration their past experiences will live a much more blissful life. This is Nietzsche's idea of a happy life, or at least the way that people should be living their lives. Another quote is, If only we just learn better to carry on history for the purposes of living, for we will happily concede that the superhistorical people possess more wisdom than we do, so long, that is, as we may be confident that we possess more life than they do. For thus, at any rate, our lack of wisdom will have more of a future than their wisdom. Similarly to the first quote, this excerpt explains that those who take into account their life's past experiences and use the wisdom and knowledge that they have collected over the years to live their life in the present will suffer much more than those who choose to forget those past experiences. Nisha suggests that the people that forget will live a fuller life. Nisha talks about the different types of history, monumental, antiquarian, and critical. Monumental history is using the past to inspire or improve on the present. For example, a great event in the history of the world was the invention of the internet. This is a monumental history. The person behind the invention of the internet, Vince Cerf, is a name that may not be recognizable, but his achievements are. We try to live our lives by taking what people from the past have done or achieved and recreating what they were capable of. The next history that Nisha touches on is antiquarian history. Antiquarian stems from the word antiquity, which describes things from ancient times. Antiquarian history is special because it shows off tradition. A quote from Nietzsche states, The fact that something has become old now gives birth to the demand that it must be immortal. For when a man reckons at every such ancient fact, an old custom of his fathers, a religious belief, an inherited political right, has undergone throughout its existence, 
what sum of reverence and admiration from individuals and generations ever since, then it seems presumptuous or even criminal to replace such an antiquity with something new and to set up in opposition to such a numerous cluster of rev revered and admire things that the single fact of what is coming into being and what is present. This is referring to anything that has set itself into history as important. Beliefs can be traditional or antiquarian, which is what Nietzsche is referring. The last type of history that Nietzsche refers to is critical history. This type of history involves questioning the past and de deciding if it is worthy enough to be brought into the present. Critical history is an important history because of its uses. People like to use every bit of information regarding our history to live their lives, and Nietzsche believed that we shouldn't always use history and historical events to govern ourselves. A quote from Nietzsche says, We modern people have nothing at all which comes from us. Only because we fill and overfill ourselves with foreign ages, customs, arts, philosophies, religions, and discoveries do we become something worthy of consideration. That is, like wandering encyclopedias, as some ancient Greek lost our time would put it. You can still be educated, but not historically educated. People consider those two things to be one and the same, and that is Nietzsche's problem with modern society. Stemming away from the types of history, Nietzsche described ways that the overuse of history in our present lives is dangerous to us. First of all, Nietzsche says that the modern man has a weakened personality. Our abuse of history has caused us to lose sight of the present, and with this, our identities as well. We mask, our, we mask ourselves as educated people through our knowledge of history, but it doesn't mean anything in the long run when we are all acting without personality. History is corrupting our very identity. The modern man also seeks out history as a means of amusement and fulfilling curiosity. Nietzsche believes that this is not how we should be looking back into history. We need to have a sense of judgment on the past so that we can pull the truth without the lack of care for anything relating to modern times. We need to be strong enough to not just view the past objectively, but to also be able to judge the past for what it was. This idea ties into morality as well as the previously mentioned topic of a lack of personality. This point relates back to the first point that Nietzsche makes in his writing. Nietzsche talks about different types of people based on history. There are people who don't pay any attention to history, and they live their lives in ignorant bliss. There are also those who do not use history in their lives, but as a result, their lives are much more dull and uneventful. However, the people of today, according to Nietzsche, are all blinded by knowledge, and they do not live fully because of this. We should be retreating back to an age of ignorance and basic living. Humanity is declining, and the best, history, the best of history is already past us. Societies believe that they are the greatest version of humanity that has ever existed, yet they don't understand that the best of humanity has already passed us. Christianity says that the end of the world is upon us, and everything great that has or will ever happen to us is all behind us at this point. Nietzsche thinks that this is wrong to believe that we can't still do anything noteworthy for ourselves in society just because Christianity says that our time is up. Nietzsche points out a serious problem for the modern man to consider. We sit around and think about history, but we don't ever consider doing anything remarkable. We don't even try to do anything to the caliber of the past, so when the future rolls around, people have nothing to criticize about, or historicize about. Nietzsche wants the people of today to create new, great people and things that will truly advance humanity, but we are currently only fulfilling an average level of spectacular feats. Nietzsche wants to trust in today's youth to lead the journey to societal greatness. However, we are held back by the teachings of the past in a way that doesn't allow for the youth to experience it themselves. He also thinks that we are allowing for our knowledge of the past to govern who we are as a society. A quote from Nietzsche says, Is life to rule over knowledge now, over science, or is knowledge to rule over life? Which of the two forces is the higher and the decisive one? Nietzsche worries that we may have mixed up what is a priority. Obviously, life should be the higher power. But to today's society is leaning towards knowledge being the true factor in guiding us. This is totally incorrect, and people need to change this, according to Nietzsche. And here are some sources.